Hey, in this video, I'm gonna talk about net unrealized appreciation (NUA). First, let's see what is NUA. Say NUA is a tax advantage for employees of participating in a retirement private sharing plan like a ESOP, 401k, stock bonus plan. That allow employers to contribute employer stocks, not cash, to the plan. So this here, they just saying NUA is a stock value at a distribution minus the stock value at a contribution. So you can see basically is appreciation over a. Over the period of time until the employee chooses to take the money out of the plan, so until then, the if the stock increase price, which is appreciates, so those appreciation is called net unrealized appreciation. And、um, what's special about it? Because the NUA is taxed as a long term capital gain when participant. Uh, participant or the beneficiaries of subsequently sell the stocks not at a distribution. So it's two things to understand. The first of all, the NUA is taxed as a long-term capital gain, and when you take out of the、uh, retirement plan, you are not taxed until you sell it. So this is very different from the traditional four hundred one k. So, ah,、uh, for traditional four hundred one k, you ah、uh, make the contribution, employer ah、uh, make the contribution in cash. Then you bought all those investment funds. So over the time, when you take the money out of your four hundred one k, you will be those money will be taxed immediately out of ah four hundred one k, um. At ordinary income, so you can see, you can immediately say NUA is an advantage. Ah,、uh, say first advantage is the tax at a long term capital gain is lower rate than ordinary income. Then can be further ah、uh, to delay those capital gain tax to until you sell it ah、uh, not at the time you take out of it. So, ah,、uh, I'm gonna show you a example later, so you will see what's going on. Then another thing, say to receive the NUA treatment, the departing worker must elect to receive the stock in shares instead of cash. So this is, um, you know, ah,、uh, this is the tax law requirement. You have to make the NUA treatment to move the shares, ah,、uh, rather than cash. So one thing, another thing, uh, you understand. So for those plans, they may have shares, they may have cash in it. For those cash, you actually can roll over to your current employer for one k, or uh, your uh individual retirement account continue to to be deferred uh tax on it. However. If you choose to be treated as an NUA, so you can you cannot be、uh, rolled over to your another retirement,、uh, such as your IRAs. So that's basically something you basic information you want to know. So now let's see a example. Say this example say Mike worked for his company for fifteen years. When Mike retired. He had a two million dollar in his company retirement account. One million, ah,、uh, was from his ten thousand shares, ah,、uh, in company stocks. The fair market value of the stock contributed over the years was a two hundred thousand dollar. So you can see, in in his plan, he had a two million dollar, but only one million dollar was ten thousand shares of the stock. So we only focus on how he handled those one million dollar. How's that being taxed? So he made the NUA election on the plan paperwork to distribute the ten thousand shares of the company stock with one million 
directly into his non-retirement brokerage account. He sold 5,000 shares within one year of the distribution at $110 per share and sold the remaining 5,000 shares after five years of distribution at $150 per share. So that's how he did uh you know with his 10,000 share one million dollar company stocks so let's see this diagram how uh you know make it clear what's the movement of this money first for uh when he worked for the company then you know during the 15 year period the company uh, contributed some stocks each year to his plan. So over the years, the plan administrator tracked all those, uh, you know, costs of the stock at a contribution. So total is two hundred thousand dollar. So now, uh, he is retired. Uh, after fifteen years, then he uh left the company. He decided to move those ten thousand shares. Uh, to his uh, taxable brokerage account. This is a lump sum distribution. You can see one million dollar ten thousand shares uh, give it give him is a uh, hundred dollar per share at uh, the time distribution, right? So within year uh within one year of the distribution, then he sold half of the shares, which is five thousand shares at one hundred ten dollar per share. Then you can see the total amount of money he received from selling those shares is $550,000. Then he subsequently, after five years, uh, he sold the remaining shares, 5,000 shares, at $150 per share. You can see the total amount he received is $750,000. So this basically is a timeline, how those shares get in the account, out of the account, you know, being sold, right? So you were wondering, okay, how the tax, what's the tax implication on, you know, all those events? First, you know, during the 15 years period of time, even he received all those uh, stocks each year, and however, those stocks are not taxed because in a retirement plan is tax deferred. Even uh, over the 15 period of time, the stocks appreciate to $1 million. So uh, all this appreciation is being deferred. So in the year 16, he decided to move all those shares to his taxable brokerage account. So then... Um, the tax implication for this event is his original $200,000 will be taxed as an ordinary income. However, the rest of the $800,000 is called NUA. It's created by this distribution, but is not taxed at this point. So NUA is always taxed as a long-term capital gain and is not taxed at the time of distribution. So then uh, because he paid $200,000 as an ordinary income uh, tax on it, so he created a basis for those uh, 10,000 share a stock is here. How about uh, when he sold the half of those shares, 5,000 shares within a year? Okay, within a year, he sold uh, those shares, so you can see uh, he has a $400,000 NUA be taxed as a long-term capital gain. How you get the $400,000 of the NUA? Well, you can see it's half of them, uh, 800, so it's 400. But you also uh, know is the NUA appreciation amount is $80 per share, 100. $100 minus $20 is $80 per share. Then 5,000 shares will give you $400,000. So those $400,000 will be taxed as a long-term capital gain. So you can see uh, there's additional $10 per share over this $100, $100 per share. 
Um, so those will, uh, you know, for five thousand shares, will give you, uh, fifty thousand dollar will be taxed as a short term capital gain rate. Um, so this is only tax tax implication. So he originally because um that was two hundred thousand dollar was being, um uh, taxed originally. So I have a one hundred thousand dollar. Uh, basis. So although he was getting five hundred fifty thousand dollar, but have hundred thousand dollar was a basis. So only four hundred and fifty thousand dollar will be taxed. So that's the implication for selling within uh one year. How about you sell after one year, which is in in Mike's this case, he sold five years later. So this um so this. Shares was sold at one hundred fifty dollar per share. Then he his NUA is not changing. NUA was decided at the time of distribution is eighty dollar per share appreciation. So five thousand shares would give him a four hundred thousand dollar NUA tax as a long term capital gain. How about the additional appreciation fifty dollar per share? So it would give him a two hundred fifty thousand dollar. So this will be taxed as a long term capital gain as well because he holds those stock more than a year. So you can see it still have a one hundred thousand dollar basis in it. You add them together, give you seven hundred fifty thousand dollar. However, again, the tax implication is four hundred thousand dollar NUA be taxed on long term capital gain rate. Two hundred fifty thousand dollar being taxed as a long term capital gain rate as well. So that's how um. Uh, NUA being taxed is a very comprehensive example, so you can see the implication for you. Uh, when to distribute, when to sell, uh, on the taxes. I'm just gonna quick uh show you a real life example. Actually, this is from a Reddit. A person was asking, uh, this question. So basically, he said. I、uh, want to do a partial four one k roll over to my newer job. Ah,、uh, will this impact NUA with the company stocks? He said, "Ah,、uh, my four one k at my former employer has about ten thousand, ah, dollar in tier price funds. This funds six thousand dollar in fed for daily. This funds and twenty four thousand dollar private held ah、uh, companies. So twenty four thousand dollar is his company stocks, right?" So this will be subject to NUA. The rest of that is not going to be uh subject to NUA. It cannot be uh treated as NUA as well. So the things that he want to roll over uh those funds to his current four one k. The reason he want to roll over because he found one of the his funds in his current. Uh, for one k plan is cheaper. Is have lower uh expense ratio. So that's why he want to roll over this ten thousand uh dollar uh tiro uh tiro price funds six thousand uh dollar for daily fund. So total sixteen thousand dollar roll over. He wants to know. He want he wants to leave the company stock, uh in the account, not touching it. He want to know, say, if I do the partial rollover, would that impact the net unrealized, uh, you know, appreciation tax benefit of the company stock when I decide to cash out later on, uh, in the life? So, the answer is no. Um,、uh, the rollover will not impact the NUA because he is not rolling over his company stock. You can roll over the rest of uh you know money. So as long as you not touch your company's stock, it's fine. So your NUA not decide until you distribute those stock, uh out of your plan. So no, it's you are totally okay to do that. But you know, but the things if I were him, I would do is first I want to find out you know what's the basis. What's what's the original contribution basis in those stocks? Because I want to know, uh, if I want to, 
you know, take the distribution out of those shares out of the plan, I will be taxed on those basis. Then planning. So Max and UA I election move all the stock to his death. If I were him, I will, you know, do do it now, you know, Max and UA election, move those open up brokerage account. Uh, so move all those twenty four thousand dollar, you know, company stocks to uh my taxable uh brokerage account. So that way after I distribute, so I only pay tax at the uh basis, right? So after I distribute, I have more control over all those stock in my taxable brokerage account because now I can decide when I gonna sell. So once I move, well, I don't need to, uh, you know, if I don't need to this money, so I can hold longer, more than a year. The longer you hold, the more beneficial to you. So, yeah, if I were him, I will totally gonna find out, uh, you know, what's the basis. So I, I will expecting how much I'm gonna pay. Then definitely make the annual election move all this money to the tax book pound. And uh, you know, make the planning. So when you're gonna sell, you can sell, you know, ten share at a time, or you can sell, you know, hundred share at a time. So it's more flexible for you once you move to your brokerage account. You have more control over. So yeah, so that's everything about the NUI I want to say in this video. Okay, thank you.